All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, a friend of the show, Coach Kyle Keller, Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks out of East Texas. Coach, how you doing, man? Good to talk to you, man, brother. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Getting ready for Christmas and, and uh, uh, making sure my wife's buying all the right presents for our little ones. I hear that, man. Let me ask you this, Coach. How has it been this year, being around more with your wife and kids, you know, with the COVID, being at home? So how was that, man, getting spent family time with your kids as they grow up here? Oh, it's been awesome. I tell you, boss, man, this is what we did. We came near you. Not not, not right next to you, but near you. Uh, I did some. I did a, a, a Griswold family vacation this summer. Wow. Uh, okay. I got a van for my sister, and, and we jumped in the van and during during the, the, the lockdown, and we went for about two and a half weeks. We went through Florida, and we just took off and driving, and we went the, uh, during – to the coast and 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 all the way through into to all the way down to to the keys and then drove all the way back and spent about two and a half weeks just the the four of us my wife and my two kids and we had a great time we'd never done that before and we're still together my wife hadn't left me yet so you're lucky man <laughs> yeah because coach i've heard a lot of pandemics called a lot of breakups this pandemic so you get time to get around everybody all the time so i've heard man, for you to make it through man hey, you are a blessed brother <laughs> oh man my wife is she's a saint and uh so it was a great time we had we had a wonderful time and and i felt like we got a lot closer and, and really got to know my kids a lot better and, and i have a 13 year old daughter and an 11 year old son and and they're awesome, and we really got to enjoy spending time together, like you know, catching up because you know you're gone so much, and and uh, it's been a wonderful time for all of us. And and uh, you know, you get two ways to to choose to handle all this stuff, right? You can either embrace it and, and enjoy it and grow from it, or you can get in you know depression. Like we're on pause right now, you know, we're not mm -hmm. able to to play games or practice, and this is the time where I've always felt like our teams always get better. No school. Uh, and just focus on basketball, and we're, we're not getting a chance to embrace and get that opportunity right now. I was going to ask you about that, Coach's perspective for your young men. You know, this year to get games in has been just amazing because of what's been going on all around us. You know, some schools haven't practiced in, in weeks and played in weeks, like Wake Forest or Siena or my some other friends around the business who haven't played the games in weeks. So for your guys to play some, some games, even though we're gonna, it's COVID season, has to be, be a blessing, though you're on pause right now. Yeah, we played five. We're going to be about eight or nine games behind when we play again. We're going to go 28 days without playing but when we play our next game, which is probably about as long as anybody. And I hate it for our guys to go that long uh, that we that we have going to experience it. 28 days, that's a long time between games. And, and uh, But, you know, we'll get about a week or so to practice before we play our next game. And, and our kids have, you know, it's been tough like everybody else. You know, you learn from it. You got to grow from it. I think they've experienced. We've got some older guys who are looking right at their life, right, yes. and saying, all right, where do we want to go with our life? I think there's, you know, they've always been told, hey, this is your schedule. This is what you're going to do. And then they've had a lot of autonomy sitting around. Hey, what, what am I going to do with my life? So life has hit them really, really square in the nose. And, and you know, that's a scary thought for, for someone that's 21, 22 years old, you know, about to get a degree and what, what are we going to do? And, and uh, a lot of anxious moments. And you can't be anxious. You know, you have to try to take control of it. And, and it's hit them a lot earlier than what they thought it might hit them. And then, Coach, I'm 33 years old. I tell myself this, Coach, adapt overcome and conquer, AOC, adapt, overcome and conquer, because I saw my staff, Coach, since my birthday party on March 14th. That's how I saw <laughs> my staff, okay? We had a great time. One last time, celebrate my birthday, of course. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. but I told with the yeah. adapt, overcome and conquer. We weren't doing interviews via Zoom. We wasn't doing over the phone. We weren't doing virtual bookings. and we was, It's all different. So, as so, so you're young men, adapt, overcome and conquer. You'll be okay through all this negativity around us. Yeah, the, the two words we've talked about with our team is flexibility and adjustability. And and those are the two things that we've tried to hammer home to our players this year is, is you have to be flexible because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring and adjustability. I mean, you know, we came off a season where we were 28 and three and won 15 in a row going into the season at the end of the season. And, you know, we finished 26th in the AP poll. And a lot of people, 
you know, we had high expectations going into our conference tournament and, and the NCAA tournament. And, and so and to have that taken away, you know, a lot of disappointment. But obviously there's so many bigger things in life that occurred uh, since March 7th when we played our last game. You know, life changed. The world changed. And, and we have to adjust to what it, what happened. And, and, you know, you either handle it well or you don't. You grow from it. But in adversity, like you're talking about, that makes you stronger. You grow from adversity. You need adversity to grow. And, and that's the beautiful thing, I think, that sports teaches you. And that's what you're doing with your show. You know, you're teaching people about how people grow from sports and, and what makes sports great. You got there, right, Coach? Let me ask you about March. You know, you couldn't tell your seniors goodbye. You know, that had to suck for them. I had to get the jersey uh -huh. on that one last time and check out the game and hug you and hug the staff one more time. Had that locker room cry together. And that's for it to be done, over, nothing else. Knowing you had a great team could make some noise and just all of a sudden it's probably an empty void for you and your seniors as well and your team from last year. Yeah, no question, boss, man. You know, we had a great senior night with, with – uh, capping off a great campaign, 19 and one our league. Actually, we'd gone to 20 games in our league and won the most games in conference history, even though we lost one, uh, went, won 19 games and had a great senior night. And one of our seniors, Nate Bain, who made that great layup and, and Duke became infamous because he just made a layup, a right-hand layup, right? Yeah. To beat Duke and Duke. and uh, he proposes to his girlfriend and gets engaged. And then another senior, John Como, plays his last game or, or Key to our team, really, because he's a great on-ball defender. And then Kevon Harris, who's an all-time leading scorer. So many, many great things. And then we heading to go to Katie, our conference tournament in Houston. And, and then we get pulled off the bus before our first practice as, as we're walking into the gym to work out. The tournament's been canceled. So we, we feed them a great meal after after that and then come home. And the staff's kind of splintered. They're, some of them have gone with their wives back home. You know, the players are still with us. And we walk in the locker room and we get – COVID tested for the first time Wow! as we came back and, and uh, for the very first time to see if anybody's positive for COVID and walk in the locker room. And I tell the guys at that time, I said, guys, I never know when we'll all be together again. I said, but I thanked them for the season and, and I tear up. I do. I kind of shed some tears and we have never been together. And that team was the last time they were ever together without excluding some of the staff. And it was, it was a sad moment, and little did hindsight's 2020, you don't know. And, you know, Kevon Harris, who is from Atlanta, signs the two-way deal with, with the Lakers, and he's out in L.A. They test – they have three of their people test positive for uh, uh, the virus as they're heading – the day camp starting, they shut down. And they, they're only allowed to bring their guaranteed contracts into camp. They, they opt out of the G League, so he's left without – any, any place to go. So, he, you know, every other NBA roster, you know, you've got that Hawks hat on right there. So he's locked out of the NBA. So now he's scrambling around trying to find a team right now and, and uh, has waited around to see if he's going to get drafted or not. I mean, some of us have it bad, but you look at a young man who's the all-time leading scorer here who had waited around all the way till uh, November to, to play an opportunity to play in the NBA. He chose the Lakers because of their roster situation and what it was. And now he's still trying to find a team to play with. And and uh, so, I mean, I, I feel terrible for a guy like that. It was an awful situation for him. But he's a tough kid. He'll make it work. Most definitely, Coach. And also, man, uh, how was it – all, just also just trying to make sure to use some Zoom to make sure young men was academically engaged, engaged with uh -huh. you and your staff personally. Because, you know, when you're back at home, man, you know, it can get to you a little bit. When you used to be on campus, spending that structure, study halls, be with the coaches, working on your game, yeah. now you're back at home now. So how would you use the Zoom to make sure your young men stayed engaged with academically and with basketball and just life in general? Yeah, probably like every other other, other coach you've talked to. I mean, it, it was it was obviously for us, it was different. You know, we, we're, a, a, we're not a – a huge school. We don't have 50,000 students. We don't have all that kind of stuff. And our resources, I think, are great for a school this size. We've got about 12 or 13,000 students. We have a great academic uh, staff and advisement. And, you know, my staff did a great job uh, of getting us together. And, and, you know, we actually had the best GPA we've ever had here this, this past spring. Wow. We did a great job this summer. But it was a lot of texting, a lot of calls, a lot of Zoom calls, and a lot of online tutoring. And, and the last couple of months of the semester and 
our, to our players' credit, uh, they did a great job with that. And, and uh, obviously, most of them went home. I had a few people stay, a few players to stay this spring, but but uh, we finished really well. I mean, you know, I think that says a lot about the character of our players, um, the credit of who they are, champions on and off the court, and, and uh, did really well. And, you know, they, they listened and they wanted to be successful. I think it's hard to be successful off the court if you're not successful. I mean, successful off the, on the court if you're not successful off and, and – uh, you know, that's part of leadership. And I think, you know, they wanted to lead, they led in all facets of life. And, and uh, you know, I will say this, don't, no disrespect to you to out, do a Zoom call with you anytime, but man, I'm sick of looking into my computer and seeing my ugly face. <laughs> I can tell you that much. You know, hey, coach, I, I, Zooms I are not fun, man. I want to see you guys in person, man. I, but it's good to see your video and then be on the phone. So it's only that's one good thing about it is that right there, not on the phone anymore. I can't even see you guys if, when we're talking now. So that's a good thing about Zoom, but y'all that man. I want to oh, see. Yeah. I, I miss the games. I miss going to cover games, going to practices. I miss that kind of thing. And I hate the Final Four got canceled. I'm looking to having you guys oh. all in my city, having you come to the studio in Midtown and with me and talk to me. I had it all cleared out of my head, coach, and all of a sudden canceled. I, Man, out of all years. Yeah, yeah. When, and I miss coming to Atlanta. You know, I mean, it's a one of the great cities in the United States, and and I know it was going to be a great Final Four, and, and uh, I have a lot of great friends there. And my friend Amir Abdul uh, Rahim is coach at Kennesaw, getting that thing turned around, and we work together at Texas A and M, and and uh, you know, it's it's and Josh Pastner over at Georgia Tech, and, and it's a great city, and, and it deserves to host the Final Four and host it properly. You know, that's that's the thing about to sell it city and, and uh, you know, Atlanta has so many great high school players and not only just players, but great coaches and the AU coaches do a great job of promoting their players there. And, and uh, you know, that's that's it's one of the hotbeds of basketball in the United States. And, and uh, you know, I enjoy getting there every chance I get. And you had to mention player you have on your roster now from Power Springs on the roster now. So, so Stephen F. Austin loves Atlanta. I know you represent Atlanta. I see yeah. you guys on the roster, man. You, you, you come this way. A lot of guys, they, 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 talk, they talk a big game, but you actually get guys to come to your school from the city. I would respect you as well. Yeah, we have, we've had a lot of good players from Atlanta here in the past and, and need to get some more, that's for sure. And, and uh, we, we like it. And, get, and kids from Atlanta seem to like coming to school here. And, and uh, we've had success with it. We need to get some more, that's for sure. And, and uh, we've lacked probably going back there, but uh, we, we need to turn this thing around by getting some guys there. And, and uh, it, basketball is so competitive there. And, yes. And, uh, yes, and, it and is. They eat and they know how to play. Now, Coach, Great coach. Now, coach for our listeners out here, Tell them about what a coach is about. And I talk to this all the time. Being a coach is one thing. That's the title, but you really a brother a friend, a father figure, a mentor, a counselor, a therapist. You can carry multiple hats under the umbrella of being a head coach. Well, I, I think it's hard to coach somebody if you don't love them, first of all. And, and if you don't love somebody, you can't coach them. And you can't uh, impact their life uh, if you don't love them, if you don't care about them. So it's, the X's and O's are just the, the bottom of the barrel about coaching, I think. And um, – but if you don't have that foundation, then, you know, it's kids today, they understand they're so different than what they were when I started 30 years ago. Um, but I think that's always been the same. I think kids respond to when they know you care about them. And there are a lot of ways to show you care about them. I mean, you care about them on the court, care about them doing right off the court, care about them uh, if they're doing well with their families, uh, being responsible. you got to hold them accountable. Um, but they got to, you know, they, and they have to love each other. I mean, they got to love the guy, their brothers in the locker room and can't be fraudulent. Um, but it's a, it's a lot more than, than what you see on the court is so small. It goes into it. And, uh, but it's a chemistry. You got to get the chemistry right. And guys got to know that you're, you're very sincere and, and, and care about what's going on. Now, Coach, for is putting in your stuff, how has that been? And I know when you had those stops and starts, those pauses, getting ramped up, you couldn't play everything you wanted in, you know. So how has it been trying to play more of a scale back with schemes and things of that nature, having a new team this year as well? So how has that been so far? You know, we probably put in mo most of our stuff as early as possible, you know, because knowing that we're going to get what you just said, boss, man, it's a great point. 
we wanted to get the majority, as much of our base stuff in as early as possible, uh, which probably made it is with the veterans we had monotonous and probably not as much fun knowing that this was going to happen uh, because they know. And so it probably wasn't ex as exciting for them uh, returning. And we focused a lot more this year on offense than we would in the past because the way we play defense with, with uh, our pressure and, you know, we've led the country two of the last three years and uh, steals and forced turnovers. We don't get to run a lot of offense in practice because of, of our pressure. Uh, so we really focused on our offense really early in, in, in practice. And, and, uh, and, and, and it's, you know, you wouldn't tell maybe by uh, uh, the last game or two, because we haven't been very good on offense, but, um, you know, we've had some injuries and it's not gone, maybe according to plan the way we want to. And, and But I think every team goes through struggles and everything, every team goes through hardships. And that's what, you know, you don't, you don't become a team, I think, until you have about two or three things happen and, and you got to go through adversity. You got, you got to become a family. And, and until you become a family, you're not a team. And, and so hopefully as we go through our pause and go through some adversity, we can start becoming a family and start becoming a team. And that's, that's what we need. You know, we need some of this so we can become who we really want to be. Now coach, I told a lot of players who came to me in private, I said, look here, this year going to show you who you're, you're a baller or you're not. Cause you got to love the game this year. It's going to show you who loves the game because you're on your own a lot. You got to put in your own work, push your own self. You can't just have coach roll the ball out for you this year. You got to really show it. I, I love the ball. And this year going to show who really a dog who's not, who's not coach. Boss man. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, our, our kids, it's funny. You know, I said this about our team a long time ago. You know, this our team has probably spent more time uh, working outside of when we're required for them to work than any team I've had uh, in the gym and, and, and lifting weights and running extra um, and, and, and the autonomy of the guys doing stuff on their own. Uh, but, man, I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, not being able to have players over to your house being around, I, I think here's one thing I think that's really unique about this year for us, at least in our program, you know, and it probably like every, every coach has probably told you this and you've had them on, you have a thousand coaches on, you're great about promoting the sport. I mean, you're awesome boss, man. I mean, I appreciate what you do for sports, but not having, you know, these kids, a lot of them need, you know, a, ma a female role model. They need mother, right? They need some softness, after we all yell on them, yell at them, and, and all those kind of things, and, and and not being able to have them over in our homes, and not being able to have you know our wives, not just my wife, but one of our assistant coaches' wives, and, and seeing children, to me that's really affected this this year, and, and kids that need nurturing, and because they need, regardless of how eighteen to twenty two, they still need that part of their life. Yes, and they're not getting that because of the tier one that, that these parents are not, these wives are not in that tier one or these kids aren't in that tier one. And I, I think that's really affected, you know, the mentality of these kids at, at this age in, in, in this season. And I hate that for them because it's not a normal year. You got that and right. That, you got that right, Coach. And that, last one I got for you is, man, so – you know, college plays coming up here real soon in January. So, are you all playing those back to backs on the weekends? How are you going to be setting it up? I know each conference is different this year. How's it going to be for you guys? You know, I I, I think that's something that our our conference we are, we're one of the few leagues in America that um, we went down in how many games we're playing, and we're not playing everybody in our league. Uh, we actually played one of our conference opponents, McNeese State, in a, in a uh, non-conference game earlier in the year. That was one of the five games we got in. Um, so, and we're only going to play 16 games, and, and we're playing every Wednesday, Saturday. We've got three off dates built in, uh, hopefully make up some games that we'll have. Um, so they had talked about playing, you know, back-to-back -back through the weekend, that got shelved. So it'll be interesting to see uh, for a team like us, um, if we can get to 13 games, um, you know, to, to qualify. Uh, we're, we're in a precarious situation right now. 
uh, with the pauses. And I think there are a lot of teams that are in that situation, but we certainly are. And, uh, you know, what what will really happen? I mean, it's, you know, I was curious as to what, what happened with Ohio State in the college football playoff, right? What they did, you know, because I think that'll affect a lot of college basketball teams, uh, how many games they get to play and qualify for the NCAA tournament and all those kind of things. I mean, you just saw the other day, every all the blanket waivers got passed mm-hmm. for in all the sports, you know, and I think the NCAA is really being sensitive to this year and, and you know, it's a free year for everybody and, and – uh, it's just, you know, that I think the sensitivity for what all these kids are going through. And I, I do think this, I, I think that, you know, it's a mental hardship uh, what these kids have gone through to try to play sports. Um, definitely. You know, being in the, but it's not normal, but I do think what, you know, the schools are doing to keep them safe is the safest thing to keep them from getting ill, you know, to get the virus. And so I think it's almost a double-edged sword. You know, they're getting to play the the sport that they love, um, but they're having to make some unbelievable sacrifices to do it. And I do think the schools are doing everything possible to keep them safe as well. So it's, it's, Hey, if you want to do it, Hey, here's the choices you have to make to do it. uh, But we're going to do everything we can to make you safe as well. So, I mean, it's, it's, it, and it, but it falls on a choice on the kids if they want to do it or not. You got there, right, Coach? Because you know what I mean? Does that I know make sense? It, it does, Coach, because, you know, it's truly, if you want to make this happen, sacrifice. You know, it's all of us that may take, take it to paying the price right now. I talked to Randy Peel as before I got on the phone with you. Still talking about sacrifice. So, you know, that's the big one I'm going to tell my staff today. Sacrifice. When I talk to my staff today at noon. Sacrifice. We got to keep doing that because it's going to pay off in the down the road. If you, if you love radio, if you love basketball, you love coaching, put in the time and work, and it'll pay off for you. Get through this COVID thing, man. We'll be okay. We'll get on the other side of this. We'll be greener, greener for Astros, Coach. I feel it, man. I feel it in my heart, man. No doubt, no doubt, and, and, and you made a lot of sacrifices. And that's why you've been successful. I mean, you're a special guy, and, and, and there's no telling where your career is going to be heading in the next three to five years. I mean, that's what makes you great. I'm trying to my best, coach, man. Try to give you all a platform, man. Because God tell you, coach, they don't talk to you guys on a random day of December unless something bad happens. I want to talk to you when it when something good is happening. When it's not something bad, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to Coach Kyle Keller. And out there with Stephen F. Austin. I love you guys. So I think that's what this platform is about, man. Give me all a, a voice when some not just when something bad or good happens. When you win a, win a, win a game or two. There you go, boss man. You're the man. I appreciate you very much. Coach, same here, buddy. Hey, man, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'll talk to you again in, in the New Year, man. And be safe and tell your wife and family say hello as well. And you're the best, man. Thanks, boss man. Ask some jacks. You got there, right? Coach, be good, bud. Thank you as always, my friend. Thank you, brother. All right, now.